What is lambda calculus? Hello, welcome back to the Hello World Show. I'm Heather Downey. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. And we are here with... Me! <laughs> okay, that's not... You said you wanted to do All your right, own intro. All right, that's you. Uh, you got Rob Connery. Uh, yes. Yes. Rob Connery, who is the author of The Imposter's Handbook, that is great for filling in the holes of things you don't know in programming and has uh, really made an impact on me coming from a place where I, I didn't have any sort of uh, formal training. So thank you so much for being willing to sit down with us. Of course. Tell us a little bit more about how you stumbled into this. Uh, I stumbled into writing the book. All of the above. You know, uh, how did you stumble into programming? How did oh, you stumble yeah. into writing the book? Because uh, I've, I've always loved computers. I just, you know, gravitate toward them. And I, I decided that I never wanted to ever touch one or work on one ever. So I went to school, UC Santa Barbara, Gauchos. And uh, I decided to be a geologist. So I was always going to be outside, away from a computer. And so I got a degree in geology, and then I ended up in the environmental field. And they said, you know what? We're going to stick all this data into a database. Anybody know anything about databases? And my hand went up. And next thing I know, I'm the DBA. And next thing I know, I've got a friend calling me saying, hey, you know, we have this web thing. They can hook up a database to a web page. You want to do that? And I'm like, yeah. And then took off on the first web bubble, and that was that. Nice, nice. So then what keeps you in the field now? What, what keeps you interested? I hate to say it, but I love investigating things. And the reason I hate to say that is some people say, oh, you're always chasing shiny fads. Someone's got to do it. You can thank me later or whatever. And then <laughs> other people like say, I told you. And I'm like, yes, you know, that one thing was not very fun. Right. I'm not the early adopter type. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm more the person that comes after. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah sure. No, I just can't. Oh, I, it's not, I wouldn't say that. But I mean, like, I just like to explore stuff and break things. That's the other thing. No, that's awesome. So then... Does your family do any of this as well, or are you the Lone Ranger? Uh, my daughter is starting to, to, to take up programming. She was doing video games uh, at her school, and it's so funny, she, says, uh, she said to me one day, she goes, uh, doing a video game uh, in this language, C Sharp, you ever heard of it? And I used to work at Microsoft. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and so uh, I'm like, yeah, I kind of heard of it. She's like, yeah, you know uh, Xamarin? You ever heard of Xamarin? And like. He's a friend of mine. I do Samrin. Yeah. Rob Hunter's daughter to Samrin. No, no, it's great. special now. She was <laughs> making a video game in Unity, so she, uh, yeah. Nice. So we had a bonding moment. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time sure, to no sit problem. with us and teach us something new. He knew. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you know, you know. Yeah. You know. That's right. All right, Rob, what are you going to teach us today? <laughs> All right. Imagine something for me. It's 1930-ish, and you know that these things called computers are starting to come together. People are starting to think about what it means to compute stuff. You're a mathematician. How do you compute something? So they say to you, we need a machine to think for us. What do you do? And you're a mathematician, right? And they think to you, well, you're going to tell us how it's done. How would you do it? Well, there's two people that decided to tackle the problem, and Alan Turing is one. We know Alan Turing. The other is Alonzo Church, and Alonzo Church is the person I want to talk about today because he's a mathematician, and he thought, well, you know what? Let's start with the most basic thing, the concept of a function. So we're going to start right here, and we're just going to have function notation f of x. Okay. This is computation right here, right? And so if we give a value of like 3 to this function, we're going to get something back, right? But then he thought, what? if we have functions that work on other functions. So it's in JavaScript. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> so right, in JavaScript we have this notation, right? We can do, uh, let's see, we can go x, if I can remember this notation off the top of my head, x goes into something like this. That's called a lambda. Why is it called a lambda? Do you know why it's called a lambda? All right. I'll get back to that in a second. So the idea with these things is that functions can go into functions, can go into functions. And so Alonzo Church decided, well, we need some special notation for working with these functions. And remember, there's no computers at this time, right? And so he's making this up. It's called a computational model, a model for computation. So he decides to come up with the Greek symbol, which is a lambda. And he says, OK, this denotes that a function's going to happen. This is the body of the function. And this is all representative stuff. It could be anything. And then this is the argument that you're going to send into this function. So this right here is a very special function. 
And you can look at this, if you, if you read this for a while, you can say, well, if this is the body of the function, which is represented by x, and this is what I'm giving it, then whatever goes into this function is going to come back out. So if I, if I apply 3 to it, put it into there, I'm going to get 3 back, right? That's a 3. So this, actually, he decided to give it a name. He said, all oh, right, I'm going to call this the identity function. And it's a simple thing, and it has a big name to it, but it's called a combinator. And so what you have is just two things, a simple thing that works in a function, function set. It takes a combination of things. In this case, it's just one thing, and so it's actually called an accombinator, the I combinator, identity combinator. So if I give this a four, I get a four back. There's also another one that goes along with it called the constant combinator, because this is a constant function. So it doesn't matter what x is, you're always going to get y back. So this is the way Church started thinking about this stuff. And he's like, well, geez. If I can do this kind of stuff, what if I was to start passing in something like that? What if I passed x to, a, to another function x to the body of this function and I get something back? And he kind of looked at this he's like, well, that's interesting. What if I did something like, let's just do this notation. What if I passed the identity function to itself? <laughs> And so he kind of looked at that and thought, well, that's interesting. What am I going to get back? If you had to guess what you're going to get back on this, what would it be? I know it's this weird notation, but what do you think that would be? It would be the identity function. It would be just itself, right? So this function just basically returns itself. Do you see what we're starting to build here? Yeah. So he's thinking, well, this is interesting. What if I did something like this? If I did, this is an x here, sorry. Lambda x, 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 right? So I'm applying x to x, and then I have lambda x, so this is going to return two of these things. And then, what if I did that? What do you think is going to be returned there? I know, I know this is tough stuff, but this is, this is one of the roots of programming right here. This thing, this equation was a massive breakthrough. And so what you're going to get is this is going to go into this, it's going to go into x and x, and two of these are going to be returned. So what you're going to get is this as your answer. What does that look like? It looks like the same function that you had up above, a loop. And then he's realizing, I've got loops here. Wouldn't it be fun if I could take these loops and start, I have this function now, it's all representative math, right? Wouldn't it be fun if I could actually do something with this loop instead of just sit there and look at this loop, go back and forth? Wouldn't it be fun if I could actually send in another function? Mm -hmm. So something like that, f of x, and then I'm not going to, I think it's, it's something like this. I think there's, there's one more to it. But then he, he, he devised this representative way, and I can't do this off the top of my head. I wish I could. This is called the omega combinator, the O combinator. If you're actually doing something with this loop, like incrementing a counter or doing something, that's called the Y combinator. And it's a fascinating bit of uh, computer science. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let me do this the right way, because I'm kind of scribbling here. So Church realized he had a loop here, and he thought, how can I actually do something? So he typed out this. So in this, we have basically the omega combinator, except this time we're applying this outer function, and the outer function gets called inside right here. So it basically means we're going to pass a function here, and it's going to iterate. And so you can, uh, you can um, actually get this to work in JavaScript, which I do in the book, uh, the book I wrote. And you can, you can go in and you can actually run like Fibonacci, because you just hand the Fibonacci equation to the Y combinator, and it will execute it a number of times, <laughs> which is bonkers. Isn't that fun? Yes. So the reason I wanted to show you this is this is one of the foundations, this, this whole way of thinking about functions, working with functions, foundation of computer programming. You can represent numbers, booleans, ifs, else, this, that, and all kinds of stuff. And it's, uh, it's really good stuff, and I really think it's something that every programmer should know at some level. Excellent. <laughs> so just to clarify one thing that I wasn't clear on, is this two parameters, or is that a one parameter going into a function of it's that it's an application so yeah okay. you're applying x to x and then and it's returning out of the body of the function okay so in, in lamb is in lambda calculus is is a function only have one parameter i mean then yes and that and that's essentially 
when you do functional programming, if you look at the, what's compiled down in F sharp, for example, yes. even if you have a multi-parameter function, what it compiles down to is a function, one parameter call going into another parameter going yep. to, and ending up with just a chain of functions. Yeah, so that's a good thing you're bringing up. So in lambda calculus, you can see terms like like this, where you would see like lambda x and then maybe y, and then, and then something like, let's just say z. That's not something you want to do, you can do it, but you basically want to split this apart so that it looks like this. Lambda x, lambda y, oops, I already did that, sorry. And what I just did right there is called currying, <laughs> yes. which is one of the things of functional programming. But split things apart, like you said, instead of having one big function, you want to have a function that calls a function that calls a function. So we can do this in JavaScript, actually, which you can sometimes see an argument like, I'm just going to say um, x, y, z goes into dot, dot, dot. So this is, this is JavaScript notation. But instead of doing this, we can curry this and get better results by saying x goes into y goes into z. That notation corresponds to little lambdas right there in lambda calculus. Lambda, lambda calculus goes together. It's kind of fun to see everything kind of. Yeah, so I think that I used lambda expressions in C-sharp before I even really knew mm -hmm. what powered it. So that's kind of interesting to reverse engineer how it came to be. That's uh -huh. awesome. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for being willing to share that with me. Yeah, the way. thank you. Sure. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.